Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test It at Comic-Con 2017. Now, you guys might know every year I walk the floor of Comic-Con in one long take, single take video to show you guys out there what it's like in this massive convention. And this year I'm joined by two new friends of Test It, Alan Penn and hey. Tamara Robertson. You might have seen them on most recently Mythbusters The Search. And uh, they're amazing. We've had them at the office. I don't, you actually, you built some model yeah. kits with us a while Star ago. Star Wars kits. <laughs> but uh, am I mistaken? To, so this is your first San Diego Comic Con for yes. both of you? Yes. Yeah. The first San Diego Comic Con. I know it's first weird, one. right? But you guys are fans and you guys, you guys are in cosplay. Yes. yes They're in okay. cosplay. <laughs> We're talking a little about your characters, your cosplay, and your general experience yeah. as we walk the floor and show the people out there what it's like. So yeah. let's just start walking in. <laughs> All right, let's go. So. Um, when you guys first got in, how, were you guys had a sense of how big the show was? Yeah, yeah. especially where, where you sort of get your badges up in the sales pavilion. Yeah. I think it was when I first kind of saw it. it's like a huge, you know, ceiling and just all this light coming. I was like, this is actually huge. Yeah, but it goes so much further than beyond the convention center. Like, what, I thought the same thing when I saw this, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, yeah, no, there's this exhibit. Like, Netflix is out in the gas lamp, like, all these different places. So it's, like, spilling out, and then they have the IMDb boat. Like, that's right. crazy. There's a boat. There's a giant tent for Blade Runner. It's yeah. not just this massive room we're in, which is, yeah. I know it's it's not, te like, they can cut it off, but it feels like one big room yeah right like the san diego convention center i like to say that when you stand at one end we're at hall g right now yeah. there's a wall right there uh you can't see the other end no no well i'm short so i can't even see that next aisle to be fair yeah. <laughs> but you're, alan, you're, alan, you're tall he's going nope, down. still nothing yeah <laughs> it's just like signage and lights um so this wall here on the other side, you guys know about Hall H? We have been Hall learning H. about Hall H. <laughs> yes. We have friends that have, like camped out like for oh, almost two full days for today's like premiere. What I've learned from Hall H is that we are not going to see the inside of it this nope. year. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> not going to happen. Maybe it's 2017 right now. After 2011, there was no chance you're going to be able to haul if, unless you camped out. I thought yeah. you were going to say it's 2017 now. If we start camping now, yeah. we'll get, we'll into, get into 2018. 2018. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> set, up your, set up your sleeping bags right now. 8,000 people are in there right now oh, watching nice. behind the scenes trailers, uh, sneak previews oh, of movies. Good shows. Ready Player One, Justice League. Oh. Marvel, oh. they're going to drop the Infinity War trailer. Like, there's are. no way they're not they going are. to. Yeah. We're hoping someone <sighs> else shares it afterwards <laughs> so that we can kind of see what we miss well we're hoping that marvel shares yes, it yes, yes. because yeah, we wouldn't too. we would never watch an illegally uploaded video <laughs> no. right? yeah. i, I mean <laughs> not on youtube yeah you're always scouring hope for that one camera and people are so clever now that if you like search leaked infinity war trailer or something you'll see oh, something that yeah. looks like it looks like a hall those. h panel and it looks like someone like holding a camera down but then once the trailer starts, it's a Rickroll. It's a Rickroll. Oh. It's a Rickroll. And they yeah. add the Rickroll so that it is like the same position as the screen and everything. Oh. The dedication that people have. Or maybe it's just something to say about the Lord Barrier of Entry to editing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. totally. So uh, right now, uh, I think we're going to make a right here. Okay. This is oh, okay. Artist Alley, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, individual tables and booths are set up so that mm -hmm. uh, artists can, can they show off their independent works, their comics. Mm -hmm. And it's like maybe three columns. Yeah, we'll go a little further down and, okay. and make a right yeah. there. And this is the place to see all of your alternate universe crossover dreams come true. That's right. So much fan fiction. Um, I love I love all the like like crossing over like Rick and Morty or other sort of mature franchises with mm -hmm. with sort of cutesy styles like you know peanuts or whatever. Right. Yeah. That's always fun because of the contrast. So <laughs> mashups. Mashups. Mashups not only for characters but also styles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, like because I do wardrobe design too, like I love just seeing the costumes. So like seeing some of the crossovers where they turn them into formal gowns. Oh yeah. And yes. been really cool. Though we did see a taco bell earlier, <laughs> and it was literally Bell from Bell from, oh, from Beauty and the Beast. Bell. But then he had tacos for his skirt. It was awesome. Was really cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. Very clever. The puns. And here, the here's puns. the Funko Pop. Yeah, the Funko Pop. I don't. I'm gonna be honest here. I don't really get the appeal of the Funko Pops. I thought. Yeah, oh, I don't, are you? Yeah, you like, okay. I'm also. I was afraid that I was gonna get Funko shit for that. Person. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I get their cutesy of the beady eyes. Yeah, yeah, and the big but heads. I'm a little over it, yeah. honestly. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I, no, not begrudging anyone who got yeah, their yeah. No, them. Go. That's cool. Do yeah, do it. I just don't. Be you. Be quirky. So yeah, Comic Con really is about doing your thing. Yeah. What are what are your things? 
Uh, so, as you can see, or maybe not, I've actually gotten a couple people mistake me. I am a gender bent Legend of Korra, Korra cosplayer right now. So I've taken sort of the base Korra outfit and tweaked it a little bit so it's a little more masculine. And so I'm doing sort of like a male version rather than a straight crossplay, which is when you would just literally put on the girl's outfit as a guy. Uh, <laughs> something I don't know that you guys might know about Alan, our tested viewers may uh -oh. know this. Uh oh, but <laughs> what, what did I say? <laughs> what you told us when we were building uh, these Bandai StarCraft kits. Yes. When you left college, you did a road trip across America. Yes, yes. I hitchhiked across America and dressed as Ash Ketchum. That's you buried the lead, was that you told us this amazing road trip story, and then you said you I did forgot. it dressed as Ash, Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. It, I mean, it's, sort of, it's one of those things I always forget about because it had so little impact. Because I was hoping that, like, I would get a bunch of like millennials recognize and be like, oh yeah, we want to pick up Ash Ketchum. And it just turned out that only like older people who remember the 70s picked me up and they had no idea who I was. But could you imagine if you had Pokemon Go at that time? You would have gone <laughs> right. across the nation, Cross like, country, getting, like, catching the Pokemons. Boom, boom, boom. Like, <laughs> that would have been cool. So Tamara, what are the, what are the subcultures and, 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 uh, characters that you're into. You're, you're the wasp right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm the unstoppable wasp, yes, which is the new the Marvel stick. character, Nadia Pym. And so, and one of the reasons that I um, have done this homage to her is because the creators actually did a Q&A with me in one of the issues, in, in uh, issue four. And so I'm like, you know, I love her. She's a scientist. She's a superhero. I like to talk a lot about superhero science, of especially course. with kids, yeah. you know, point out, hey, the superheroes you already love, they're scientists, makes it easy. So I'm a big, I'm a big Marvel supporter, but I did come as Starfire, so I'm, I don't dislike DC, I love them all. So. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Did that take a long time for you to make? It did, actually. This, um, the bodysuit took so long to make. It was a full day for each arm because of all the hand sewing that I actually got um, amazing um, girl Claire to commission my wings and my helmet for me. Oh. And sh the reason we met was Mythbusters The Search. She was a That's big awesome. fan of the original Mythbusters. Shout and out then, to Claire and Mythbusters yes. The Search fans. Yeah. She's awesome. Fox Dragon there are Cosplay, a few of them. There are a few of them. We're going to make a right here because <clears throat> I can see in the distance there's a massive panel oh, pushing really? the WB. Oh, it's even. a Supergirl panel going on. It's a signing. Let's not even yeah, deal this with is, that. This is Saturday <laughs> Comic Con now and it's the most packed day. Families are here. It's elbows to elbows, elbows. and uh, we tried cho choosing the the widest lane. Uh -huh. But yeah, sometimes the big studio panels, whether it's Warner Brothers or, yeah. or Fox, when they have their stars, traffic stoppers, traffic yeah. stoppers. Yesterday, yep. yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was gonna say yesterday <laughs> they had the Black Panther here, and you could not get through it all. The whole cast was here, and they're just yelling, "Keep walking, keep walking, oh keep walking!" Yeah. yeah, fire hazards. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and this is like. You know, right now, a lane like this is pretty typical of uh, most pop culture conventions, right? Yeah. A lot of retailers, people selling things like Funko. The swag. swag. Yeah, the swag. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you guys pick up swag when you're on your uh, I like on to the pick floor? up art from the artists, mm. especially like um, I picked up one today that was, it was called um, Superhero Daycare. And it was all the little girls as children, all the female superheroes. Cool. So I got this for my nieces and then I picked up one. It was really cool. It was all the um, the DC comics, and then they had a no flash sign in the museum, and Flash was sitting there like, like no very flash. sad, no flash. So I, when I was younger, I would go to anime conventions when I was in high school, and it was like anime conventions in the Midwest in Illinois. So oh. I would get a ton of swag at those because back then, you know, early 2000s, there was really nowhere else you could get a Naruto headband than oh. an anime oh. convention, you right. know. Um, but nowadays, it's like no, you Nazi. It's a little easier, yeah. And plus, I I was just a lot freer with my money in high school. And now as an adult, when I'm like, oh god, I need to pay for health insurance. I'm a little stingier. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't I don't shop around as much at, at an event like this as I might have used to. I see. In WonderCon this year was my very first ever con for okay. cosplay. Like I'd been to like chemical conventions, but never anything like this. So I didn't realize the shopping side of it. So right. I had spent my entire like con budget just on like the my my cosplay and right. the and the rooms and the driving and stuff. So I got there and I was like, oh, I need extra money to shop. Yeah. So this time I made sure to budget in money to shop. Yeah, and and Sunday is a good day for that because a lot of retailers will have pack up uh, stuff and yeah, yeah. no one wants to bring stuff back home. Got to ship it back it or down. so Sunday is a good day. Things might be discounted, oh. but it's also like whether it's an artist alley or these boots where you have like independent artists, 
if you're not going to buy something here, it's great to get their business cards and check out their stuff online. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's and it's a lot of people who you may recognize like on Instagram or on Facebook. And like, I, I, I follow their art for years, but this is an event where you can actually meet them in person, tell them how much you like their art, and yeah. chat I mean, as, as much as like, I, I kind of consoled myself not being in Hall H <clears throat> by saying like, that trailer will drop in a couple days, right? Yeah. But it's, you know, it's not just about being the first to see a trailer, it's being in the room with the people, like, you know, in the case of the panel, the actual actors, and yeah. just having like other fans around you yeah. and it's having that energy. that energy. But you know what? I don't I don't care about that. Whatever. Don't don't even this, matter. Whatever. This energy is really great too though. Because that was the thing is we're like, well we could wait in line, but then we would miss out on being on the floor and getting to really experience it. And everyone does being on the floor differently. Like, we're walking. Some people yeah. do like they'll walk and they'll shop. Some people stay at one booth and just watch like for example a makeup demo yeah. for two or three hours. These are impressive. Chat with someone. That's totally an okay way to experience Comic-Con. Um, and then of course some people have really elaborate cosplay like wow. this guy right here. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's amazing. That, oh, that is crazy. Big old bug I think he's actually he's oh, with this school. Oh, check out the eyes. Oh, wow. yeah, I think that's... the eyes? Oh, this guy's getting a baseball crustacean <laughs> leg here. <laughs> Wow. I don't know how. It's not even, look, we got people carrying his legs. This yeah, is even his full this, outfit. He's got, he, well, yeah, his legs are actually off right now. That's, That's so insane. impressive. Yeah. Some that of them don't me. actually fit through the doorway. That yes. was the cool thing to see is like the people that they just dedicate <laughs> to being outside for pictures to enjoy it mm -hmm. in their cosplay. Yeah. Just seeing someone Hulkbusters like <laughs> trying to fit through a door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, excuse, excuse me. And people go with groups too. <laughs> hmm? Right? Yes. They go in groups. Like, the group yeah. cosplay is so cool. But actually, and speaking of like the Instagram meetups, like I because I was learning how to cosplay, I followed a lot of Instagrammers that do really incredible cosplays, and they kind of they give you a lot of help. And I've actually been able to meet quite a few of them oh, here. Awesome. So now we're talking about like future group mashups because yes. I don't really have a group that comes. Well, I have Alan now. <laughs> yeah, this but is. We, we totally go together. I mean, obviously, we we talk beforehand. It, it's yeah. the, it's a mashup. <laughs> yes. Cora, Cora, Cora finds a spirit portal that leads to the Marvel Universe. Yes, and then, and then I, I'm a scientist, so fight. I'm trying to help yeah, yes. as the Unstoppable Wasp get yes. back through the portal. For sure, Cora. yeah, and yeah. then we all fight Thanos and also Batu at the same time. It's the yes. uh, Mythbusters, the Search Cinematic Universe. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's we should create. That's gonna happen. <laughs> that's. Uh, Fantastic. That, is really, that would be fun. I just, I, I have, we used to joke about the after show that most people weren't seeing that should have been a show. Oh, yeah. So this could be yeah. a way yep. to get it out in comic form. I'm imagining Hackett with an eye patch and a trench coat. Yes. <laughs> I think, I mean, but he has to have a, kid, a cat somewhere because he loves cats. So. Uh, but, okay, Nick Fury with a cat. <laughs> there you go. Um, they're massive boots. We're actually now moving from some of the more retail boots mm -hmm. now to the, the studio boots. Yeah. So around us, like the infrastructure that's set up for some of these boots is incredible. They're like double decker, that Walking Dead booth over there. Looks like it's like two and a half stories. Yeah, that experience has got real, it's got a cage outside that has just got tons of zombies too. So it's pretty cool. I, I haven't even tried venturing over here yet. So this is all new to me. Oh. Yeah, so you had a, uh, Funimation, BBC America with Doctor Who. They've kind of built this up like little sets from yeah. totally. the properties, from yeah. the franchise. It's really cool when you dress up too to find yourself on one of the booths and get a picture with it. Like that's yeah. my favorite thing to try to do. And sometimes they have either uh, props or costumes on display. Yeah, I mean there's a Dalek right over there. That's right, <laughs> yeah, right there at cool. the BBC booth. Um, or they're closed off so you have to wait in a line and you can then get an exclusive look at something, some experience inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they have like the Funimation booth have their exclusive puffs that they own, or the Funkos that they only gave away on preview night. Mm -hmm. So right. like people were lined up like crazy just to get them. Yeah, get that con That's exclusive what, content. It's like I'm getting the buttons every day from the Cartoon Network. I think there's definitely a, a type of con goer who loves waiting in line for an exclusive <laughs> and has the patience for it and maybe has like a, it's like going to Disneyland you're like you know planning out your mm -hmm. fast pass you're yeah. Except yeah. it's, it's planning out where your freebies and where your autograph sessions and where your photo opportunities are yeah be. that's something if I if doing this again I would definitely be more organized because I kind of thought I would just show up here and be like oh I'll go to this panel I'll go to that panel just kind of as I find out about them and I learned really quickly I was like 
you got to plan this. You like set schedule where I'm yeah. going to be at these hours so that you get everything that you want. And, it's and like, it's, you got to get there in advance. Like yesterday we went to Adam's panel. We got there three panels before. <laughs> and he's like, I think we're the only ones doing it. I was like, I don't think so. So then he asked the people in front of us and they're all like, no, we're camping out. You, so we're like just here moving as quickly as we could to get up. <laughs> You mean they weren't there for uh, Vikings, the one before? It was like digital comics, I think. And it was actually like, it was really weird because once you could tell that so many people were there Keep just moving. waiting for the Keep next moving. panel that they opened up the Q&A and no one went up to the mic. Oh. And so then I was like, uh, uh, I walked around, I got nice. a question about digital comics. <laughs> it was the funniest thing too, because everyone was camped out for Adam. Um, they, they were all on their phones, so he gets up there and he's like, uh, hi, I'm Alan, and everyone looks up like, I know that voice, and then afterwards we got bombarded. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Which is cool. I didn't, uh, right. didn't anticipate that. <laughs> he's like, oh, I forgot that people might actually know. I'm like, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a great, like, in terms of the toys, I don't know, do you guys that collect anything? Uh, I... Again, with the money thing, when I was a kid, um, I had a very large Beast Wars collection. Beast um, Wars. Beast Wars. Okay. That, if you remember the 90s, yes. late 90s, Beast Wars. And it's so interesting because back then, like, I didn't understand the lore, the whole Transformers lore. Like, in that show, there's all these connections to the original age. I, didn't get, I thought it was cool that there was a dinosaur that turned into a robot, right? Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> dinosaurs and robots, yeah. two amazing things combined. So I, I have kind of like... A soft spot for for those sorts of transforming robot figures but i have not bought any recently um at, a few years ago they had a remake of the mighty morph and power rangers megazord but mm -hmm. in plastic not die cast and i grabbed it just because it was like 20 bucks or something but that's it you speak my language we're saying plastic versus die cast yeah, yeah. like yeah. scale you don't want the thing that's gonna be the best one. I mean, it's yeah. except like, when you look at the new Megazord in the stores, it's garbage. Like the toys for the, at least the ones I've seen, the like consumer mainstream ones, are just like these hardly articulated cheap plastic garbage. At least in my opinion. Not hate if, if you like that, no hate, but I gotta hate. call attention. We're gonna stop right here. This is the Weta booth. Yeah. Whoa. Weta it's Workshop amazing. has they have books, they have art, they have collectibles, and they have some amazing costumes. Right in front of us, that's Scarlett Johansson's costume. Wow, she's from so, Ghost in the Shell. She's staying so, so still. What a yeah, professional. I know. Yeah. She's just sleeping. Oh, there's Taco Bell. We were talking about him earlier. Taco Bell! Yeah. <laughs> that came full circle. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great. I love it. I love that. the bed. Look at the bed. It's amazing. <laughs> and the necklace is it's so good. And the it's name pack. Actually, everything. Everything. Less expensive than one would think. <laughs> Very good. You're awesome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, uh, Danica, my wife, wore that costume last year when we were at What Up. We did a video wow. with them. And wow. that's all made of silicone. And uh, it's it's just, as a piece of fabricated costume, it's an uh, unbelievable piece of construction. Did she say if it was comfortable or not? Like, uh, what does it, was, it feel like to just no, wear a... sweat a lot. Yeah. Yes. yes, the answer is yes. Lots of sweat. 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 sweat. That is the one thing with, with the heat. That's like coming in and walking in, like not realizing how drenched we would be each yes. day. It's been interesting. Yeah, you see people hand out free t-shirts and pins and mm -hmm. someone's got to find the deodorant opportunity to, to hand <laughs> yeah, that out. Yeah. Come and deodorant. I think yeah, that right, one right actually, around or the, even just the, air freshening spray, so you just yeah. walk the in. The halfway point of the through. con, getting a Febreze cart or something, make yeah. millions. <laughs> I don't, can't imagine how much the AC costs, you know, because there is actually AC in this building. Every good con yeah. should have AC. It's like 90 degrees outside in San Diego. So it's, yeah, thank goodness <laughs> it doesn't feel like that in here. But, oh, like Star Wars. Like, wow. You guys are Star Wars yeah, fans, right? these are amazing. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> More of a Trekkie, but, yeah. Oh, then we got to stop by. These yeah, have you seen, uh, they have some, uh, some great Star Trek uh, stuff. That, I believe, is Star Trek Discovery. Oh, can we yeah, take a look at that? That, that is, is hmm. wow. That, I think, is a new Klingon outfit from Star Trek. I haven't even the seen Klingons this. Klingons are my favorite. These are, uh, this is the Torchbearer torch suit bearer. designed wow. by Alchemy Studios. Uh, Neville Page, the creature creator who worked for J.J. Um, Abrams in Star Trek uh, and Star Trek Beyond. And this is a 3D printed oh, that wow. cat. Of a Klingon, you can see the Klingon logo on his shoulder, but this is unlike any Klingon 
Can you imagine how much they're going to sweat when they wear like, yeah. or are right? sweating already? You know. Uh, so Discovery is that is that in the cinematic Star Trek universe or in the TV one? I believe it is the TV universe. It is. Okay. An earlier era than TNG and, and TOS. Okay. Or in the TOS era, I believe. Well, I was gonna say because uh, it's it's the designs sometimes look more complex than, like if it's set before. Yeah. Like, TNG, but sometimes it looks like they're more advanced in some ways. It's a bit of a. The, the, the logic holes you're poking are exactly the fan <laughs> the fan questions we have. Like in the 60s, they didn't have the production resources to make costumes <laughs> this complex. Klingons ever look like that. But yeah, it's very armored and, and very um, organic almost. I like the details. It's almost like a um, you know on the front of a ship with the like women on his boots. It's, just, it's great. Yeah. Like, wow. That's very cool. And that's a 3D printed piece. That's impressive. Now that make that that sword there is definitely Klingon. The one that. You stab and yes. opens up. Oh, with that is yes. classic, oh. classic Klingon dagger. <laughs> cool. <hate> yes. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing the bat lift. On there. Yes. <laughs> Two handed, very impractical, impractical <laughs> weapon. <laughs> uh, let's carry on. Oh, uh, I know. We're squeezed now between approaching two right. massive toy booths. Yes. And yeah. this is going to be a little bit of a gauntlet. So we're going right, to try go. to get yeah. through. Um, but and we should watch out for the lower levels because there's a lot of kids here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> in, the, in this section, especially. Uh, Hasbro and Mattel, two massive, massive, uh, actually, I think maybe all Hasbro and Mattel over there, but massive boots for toys. They, they turn the booth into a line, as to like basically turn it into a, like a mini Target where you can shop. Nice. Well, it's smart. Anytime you have kids and parents with credit cards, you just put a toy out there and, and the money's gone. Oh, when I see, oh, there's a big old Mjolnir hanging up there. Yes. You can oh. actually stand in line and hold it for a picture. Wait, that one? No, not the big, big okay. right under it. Right under it is a, is a regular size. Okay, I was like, size. like, like just, just. <laughs> Yeah, because I've gone by and I'm like, maybe the line will get shorter. It, it never does. It never does. They've done a really good job designing the booths, like obviously they want to do a couple things. They want to like, sell the toys mm -hmm. if they're here. They want to preview some of the toys that people can look forward to in the fall, in the winter, for holiday season. Yeah. But they also want to get people to take pictures with big things. So they advertise for they, free. Yes. Smart. And so you have these setups where people are waiting in line to either hold the Mjolnir or I've seen them um, have oh, like a mock up. I see. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Where you can like look like you're an action figure and you stand inside like a, a package. Like Those a, are cool. And then they, sometimes they bring in really massive um, displays. So I think like at the Mattel booth, there's like a, a full size Batmobile from Justice League. Yeah. Just on the I booth there. A lot of guns for the I, Batmobile. <laughs> this was probably one of my favorite finds with the Gremlins. Oh, I, yes. Like I took yeah. a picture with him immediately wow. and have come back and seen him every day. He's just beautiful. Yeah, this I, is a, this whole area is Toynami. Uh, they manufacture for this company, Cin Cinemaquette, uh, lead creature collectibles, a sculptor named Steve Wang who did the sculpture for the original Predator outfits. It's his company. And so he and his team have licenses to do these replicas. They're like, they're in the high-end collectible range, so I'm not going to personally buy them. But <laughs> nope. an event like this lets me get up close and, and take pictures yeah. and yeah. at least look at it. And maybe make the detail. One yes, <laughs> get some reference. Yeah. yeah. So those are, those are very cool. Um, yeah, here you have see this massive that, Justice League. Is that a mother uh, cube or? That's, I bet that is. Yeah. You know, that's. It's funny, a glowing blue cube is like <laughs> it's, the it's thing. It's just the that, comic thing. Now. Right, right. You have a Tesseract, glowing blue cube yeah. on the Marvel side. This is a MacGuffin. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not going to lie though, when I see a cube, I automatically think Hellraiser. So oh, I kinda, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay away from the cube. Totally. <laughs> um, and then, of course, they have the costumes. They have the Star Wars Ooh, booth. So Lucasfilm yeah. also has a massive booth on the right here. This look, uh, it looks so clean. Like yeah, it's, very, it's it's really, it's, you can actually walk through without getting in a line, but then oh. get in lines to see like the wardrobe or actually purchase sets. So it's right. neat because you can actually experience this one without having to queue up. You know what, Let's since we're in the big mess here, let's go through it real quick oh, and see it. if we can uh, take a look at some of those costumes. Because you're right, like even from a distance, they have some of the costumes and characters from The Last Jedi coming out this winter, uh, last it's, year. It's, a Petco experience, and there's a picture of Chewbacca right under that. Yes, well, that makes sense, you know. He, he probably really likes treats. <laughs> um, yep, I think over on that side, some displays. Yep. You They're have uh, the, the Last Jedi characters. Whoa. Yep. Isn't that cool? That's neat. 
And they've been playing the movie too, so you can walk in, come in, see it. Yes, clips from the movie. And it's also like a good destination for uh, Star Wars cosplayers. Right, if you're gonna dress up as Kylo Ren, Rey, Captain Phasma, Vader, this is a great place for Star Wars fans to come and, um, and have their photos taken. Are, are we allowed to be in it? Oh, there's a That's line for it. Oh, yeah. 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 They have it set up. You gotta wait in this line. You know what? This is actually not a long line. Previous days, I've seen it really, really long. He's smiling too much for an Imperial officer. More grimacing. Those, yeah. Super, super cool. So since this is our first year, we've been wondering, like, on Sunday, is it going to be a little bit easier to get into yes. events? Sunday, they typically call it family day. Now, in terms uh, of getting easier, um, the tickets will be sold out, but it'll be fewer people. Most people are driving away on Sunday. Okay. Uh, it closes a little earlier. Yeah. The vendors, they definitely stay till Monday before they pack up, but they're trying to get rid of some of the merchandise. Uh, if we work you know, Wednesday to Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday morning is the, the free time walk around time. So. Nice. I, I really like that there are some panels that they have kind of similar panels on Sunday that they have from Friday and Saturday, like Steven Universe or um, like other things that were really hard to get into that I didn't get into. And right. Sunday's sort of my second chance. Yes. Where maybe yeah. there's there's a fewer celebrities yeah. there, but it's still sort of like a similar panel, but maybe a little bit easier to get into. Yeah. Look at, totally. I already just sweated through this thing. <laughs> just walking around. And we're not even walking very fast. No, no, we're, this is very leisurely. <laughs> yes, totally. Uh, there's a giant Lego booth over there. Yeah. I think that's, we see a lot of parents with kids. They have like all the Lego pieces out. You also have the, the sculptures. The sculptures like, are really cool. Oh, there the was Legos a Pokemon one. Yeah, the Pokemon the, one was cool. It was like a light-up Pokemon Lego thing. It was super mm. cool. <laughs> Full size of Thor from Thor Ragnarok. Yep. I didn't see that one. Yeah, he's in the front. He'll actually be on the corner. Yeah, so yeah. we'll turn in there. And uh, and I, I kind of do like how Comic-Con is divided up. So you're like, if, you, if you're into just the TV shows, the cartoons, Cartoon mm -hmm. Network, like there's all in Nickelodeon, there's a whole area just for you. Right. If you just are here for the live action TV stuff, your your uh, your FX, uh, yeah, we'll go we'll go we'll go this way. Uh, then there's a whole area just for you. If you just like the toys, the high end collectibles. There's an area just for you. Um, and if you're here for comics, because you know it is Comic Con, mm -hmm. the comic publishers are also also here as well. Yeah, you got little little distinct villages like little mm -hmm. Tokyo and a little Greek town or whatever. Except it's like different mediums and genres. It always makes me wonder what would happen if Comic-Con like ran for more than just the four days. It was a 24-7, 365, like what? I think, I mean, given the, the rate that it's growing, I wouldn't be surprised if someday it was just like a three month long, just self-sustaining village yeah. of pop yeah. culture that existed. Its own economics. You'd have like people fighting economy. each other, wars going over Marvel and DC. <laughs> But you can you can always find a con like every month or like yeah. at least if not multiple times a month anywhere in the country. That's right. been the kind of cool thing is like here everyone's like oh are you gonna go to the Long Beach one next? Are you gonna go to this next? It's like there's even more right yes. in this area. And even if you're here, it doesn't mean you're gonna see all the quote unquote coolest stuff. Yeah. Right. right. Comic Con gets a lot of attention for the things that happen in Hall H, but the vast vast majority of people, even the people you know with like press badges, don't get to go in. Nope. It's like the really dedicated. You know, people who camp yeah. out. Absolutely. Yeah, so you, you guess you're missing, what you're really missing out is, is like the, the expensive hotel room and the, the sweating on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh so right now we're, we're kind of in between uh, some of the, the publishers. So you got, uh, you got Top Cow, Dark Horse, IDW. Um, you actually see down there Ronberry, Gene yeah. Ronberry's family has a booth. I spent have, a while there. Oh, <laughs> you see those posters, they have some yeah. anniversary celebratory posters with every character mm -hmm. that's been in Star Trek, original series, Next Generation. They're amazing. Yeah. They do not take American Express, I found out, so I had to, <laughs> they do hold for you if you do not have it. They, though, they'll so hold for you. I went Very back. cool. <laughs> you can buy a Tribble also. I, yes, Tribbles. that's already, I've got multiples now. Can't have too many of those. <laughs> I mean, you can, but... You can have trouble <laughs> if you have too many trouble. <laughs> Not, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, uh, there's also a, a giant Marvel booth. Oh, it says Thor Ragnarok right now. Um, so that's a giant screen, actually. Changes day to day, and they have the different actors yeah. from every movie uh, come up and sit on stage. 
think the cast is actually up there now. Today. Either it, ending or starting an event. So that whole like aisle would not be passable right now. It's, it's the learned. reason we're we're in this aisle. Yeah. <laughs> We would be stuck there for at least 15, 20 minutes. It's nice when you have to detour though, because I like found Alex Ross for the first time ever. Like, cause this oh. this art is amazing. Yes, like, I had never yes. seen it before. And yeah. Like, so because I was avoiding the massive crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's like the biggest recommendation I would have for someone at Comic Con is, don't go necessarily for the the big stuff, mm -hmm. right? Find an independent artist. Or find around. even Alex Ross. Find find an artist that has done maybe recognized from a poster or a comic book cover and. They'll have people there, they might even be there, and yeah. you can say hi, you can chat with them, and you can more often than not, you know, maybe get a print, or in the old days, you could also get sketches from the artists. Hmm. I don't know many artists, maybe the big anymore. name ones, because it's just so popular, yeah. but there, there were years I went where, yeah, you still have to wait in line, but they would do like five sketches, you know, in, a, in an hour, and, and drawing your sketchbook. You see them all drawing, like when you go through Artist Alley, like if there's no one at their booth, they're just drawing. It's amazing yeah, it what they like just bust out. Like, just really totally. incredible. I think, I think we're getting photobombed by a robot there. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Is that a vendor? I love this this, uh, this Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go. Yes. This little tableau that they've got painted over here. I came over here when I was dressed in Starfire and oh. I got a picture with it. It was, it was awesome. pretty cool. They're bringing it back, right? So, no, Teen Titans Go is currently airing, yep. but it's sort of a more kid-friendly, less lore mythology-driven version. It's actually kind of controversial, which is why I like this this like painting here because it's sort of acknowledging that the fans fans of Teen Titans don't necessarily have the most love for Teen Titans Go because yeah. they prefer more of the original series, whereas this is more of a like comedic version. You know, yep. they're more chibi-fied. We tiptoe. We can yeah, see the cool. Batman. Flash, yes. Cyborg, yeah, the no, whole no. Justice League armor, all that beautiful costume. Aquaman is on the other side with Wonder Woman and they are just gorgeous. I was in there oh. getting close video earlier. It's just it's Should we dare? Dare try to walk you in and get think, closer look? I think we can make it. Alright, yeah. let's let's try. Uh oh. We got some we got some rope here. We can walk past. Well that's that. that's for let's, the let's go around it. just go through the center. Here we go. I think the viewers out there would be uh, not very happy if we didn't stop by <laughs> to check out check out this costuming. Here we go. Wow. wow. So it's so interesting how they decided for for the Justice League movie version of Flash to make his suit almost like an armor, you know, like a yeah. stiff thing. I, I don't know if I've really seen that before. Yeah, it's more like an Injustice, the video game. They he's, yeah. he's armored, make it kind of like a little harder looking. I like it. I like yeah. the. Um, the roping that they have that kind of holds him together because it's like he's out of control. He's gonna run so fast. He's gonna kind of yeah. And also fall how, apart. how Batman he almost he's got the goggles that almost make him look like Night Owl from Everyone from Watchmen. Yeah. Yes. yes. Where where his design was inspired by Batman, and now Batman's kind of like mirroring that again. It, it totally comes full circle. <laughs> the textures and the fabrics are really cool. You can tell that they're actually trying to give them more breathability in these suits they're having to wear for long shooting days yeah. too. Good definition in the... Yeah, just the, the texture, like the amount yeah. of texture translating something that's drawn into something that like has to actually exist. Yeah. It's not easy at yeah, all. Yeah, because when you think when you think of something on the page, like you always think, oh, just make it look like that in real life. But then when you do it, it ends up looking goofy, having those solid like primary colors on right. things. It never yeah. looks good in real life. Right. I want to catch a quick glimpse at uh, Aquaman, Aquaman here. Aquaman is amazing. What they've done with the, I just, this, I cannot wait to see. Five pointed trident. <laughs> what, would, what would be called is actually five a points. Pendant. <laughs> Pentadent. I'm not sure. Do you yeah. have any word, Superman, what it's called if it's a five-pointed thing? Uh, a five-inch. <laughs> <A> five <-inch. laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's get to the chase here. Really explain. Where is, where is Superman right now? Yeah. He's where, dead. Yeah. He's dead, right? Yeah. He's No way he's coming back. <laughs> he's right He's standing right in front of us. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> And then of course uh, Wonder Woman. Did you guys watch Wonder Woman? Yes. yes. I was I was really lucky. I got to see an early an early screening of it, and just awesome. like it was awesome. Just watch the crowd, just like blown away by it. You know, that armor so good. Want to get a closer it's look? Yeah. I think they did they did a great job. Especially like 
carved boots. Are just, mm -hmm. like, really cool. You can tell that they put a lot of detail in so that she can actually have movability. Yeah, the yes. articulation. And it looks like armor. It looks like greaves yep. on a suit of armor. I know this is a small thing, but I, I really appreciate it is that you can tell that at the at the top of her top like the those wings there are always these points in the comics that just look like they would just stab her boobs and they had they had the courtesy that in the actual costume they fold out like it's a little detail but you can tell that those points don't stab into her chest anymore which is like yeah good point yes absolutely very cool all right let's get out of the booth here before we get clobbered oh okay we're going to back up a little bit. Ah, I always find myself at Comic-Con at this massive Sideshow Collectibles booth. Uh, they're makers of, again, like statues, collectibles, sometimes one quarter scale, so about 16 inches tall for a character. But it, they're sculptures, basically. And they do have yeah. some full size, too. They like, do. They have a amazing. They have a full K2SO from, uh, from Star Wars, yes. which just structurally, I don't even know how they do that. Cause <laughs> It never existed in the movie. It was all CG mm -hmm. in the movie. So to make that a full, did, full size one. Did Alan Tudyk did do motion capture for he that? Did. Yeah. Oh, okay. He okay. did. Yeah. I guess they must have had him on stilts or something. <laughs> I like the I like the Predator ones too. They're amazing. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go move a little quicker because we're, we're gonna get caught in a in a photo crowd. A photo yeah. yeah. Let's oh, move boy. around just a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna weave. I'm gonna weave in through the booth. Nice. You guys. Whew. You can tell this isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> oh yeah. You can tell when there are a group of really good cosplayers um, yes. grouped together. They just cause traffic. It's like there's a bubble that forms around them. Right? Like you have Superman and then you have a Wolverine from um, uh, Weapon X and and people just line up and take their photos. Okay, a little bit of breathing room. Ooh, this is nice actually. Yeah. There was a really phenomenal um, group that was doing Beetlejuice. Oh, like, and they actually had the pool stretch faces and everything, and they were just amazing. They like stayed out front for people to take pictures for quite a while. The lobby is a really great place to hang out. Yes. Right at like Hall D, uh, right before the escalators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good natural light there too. Get some yeah. photos. It's actually like pretty cool. When I, I, I went there and I put the wings up and oh, actually yes. like just yes. ended up being there Let for a while because out. of the photography. Very cool. But they had to be down for walking. <laughs> Around here, past the the big publishers, um, these are some of the indie publishers um, that they do not only indie comics but also uh, graphic novels, zines. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Uh, there's like, alternative press, I guess, is the, the category, um, and a lot. Oh, that is wow. that's a cool makeup demo. Yeah, pretty that's really <laughs> good. <laughs> A lot of patience on the actor's part to yep. sit there. <laughs> yeah. Or, or a lucky volunteer. Um, yeah, publishing groups, novels, uh, adaptations, uh, magazines. Uh, you guys subscribe to anything? What, what are your regular reads? Uh, you mean in terms of like like digital comics? Comics, or... Di comics digital comics. I mean, I, I, I like me a good web comic. Like, um, oh, okay. I mean, when, when it does update, Dresden Kodak, if you're familiar with that. Oh, it's, no. it's sort of like this cool cyborg transhumanist thing, but it, it's kind of infamous for its terrible update schedule. Like, it's like once every few months you get a new page. <laughs> um, I mean, the class, like XKCD, SMBC, those Ex sort I of love XKCD. classics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're all, like, SMBC, I think, is here. I think they, you think they have a booth here? I'm pretty sure they have a booth here, and I'm pretty sure they have a red button you can push. Oh, to get the to get, to get the, the bonus comment. <laughs> That's cool. Because that um, uh, Zach Wienersmith, right? Yes. He recently published a book with his wife, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have not read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so web comics, um, you know, uh, R. Stevens um, under the umbrella, like. like I used to read web comics all the time in college, mm -hmm. it's like over 10 years ago. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see the artists here. That's so And cool. maybe buy some socks with their, with their comics on them. Yeah. And buy socks and t-shirts. Yeah, cool. swag. You guys show it like it's, it's nice to sort of put that on your body as sort of like a declaration so that people kind of know like which little like camp you're in in terms of fandom. And I always, then when people come up to you and you're like, yeah, you're cool because you know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. You get yeah. like the head turn. Oh, we, we watch that same that same web read that same <laughs> web comic or watch that show that no one else watches. Whoa! Oh, Check nice. out this dude. This. 
is wow, pretty amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's like a, it is a version of a, a Chewbacca? No, 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 because no. I was mistaken because it looked like the bandolier here. But that the eyes. Character. Yeah, those are phenomenal. Oh, that's a, I don't that's recognize, a great... I don't recognize you. I'm sorry. There he is right there. Cool though. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh that's I don't a feel her. Like El Ron wow, Hubbard. Saga of the year 2000. All right. Oh, he's, he's oh. pointing at me. Oh. 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 <laughs> Felt he, right <laughs> into that one. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, he got you. <laughs> yeah. We're keeping wow. that, right? We're keeping yeah, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're keeping really that. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Wow. All sorts of characters. That was here. amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, so we're getting actually close to the end. We're at uh, number 1,100. We've only walked four fits, I think, of Comic Con so far. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, Feeling a little sweaty. Yeah. I know, definitely. Look <laughs> yeah. at this. I'm Wait, water bending yeah. the heck out of myself right now. <laughs> when you mentioned the t shirts, I'm like, my first thought was I always underpack because I think if I run out of t shirts, I only need one t shirt per day. No, you're going to Comic Con, you maybe need like two or three t shirts per day. <laughs> Go back to the hotel room, change midday, or I just buy one here. You know, it's a good excuse to. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, I, I sweated yeah. through the shirt. I need a new one. Oh, yeah. there's one. Yeah. That's cool. Get what a piece I... of swag. I always uh, visit the Owl Inc. booths to get some Big Bang Theory oh. shirts. So, okay. Um, I like went and saw them immediately. But, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, when the doors open, like people, they make a beeline to the thing they know that's gonna have the exclusive. That's gonna like they want to be first in line to get the thing, mm -hmm. to meet the creator, or they get the swag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lines that is cool. everywhere. That swag, yeah. it's like a trophy. It it's is. Like bragging rights that you had the dedication to do that. <laughs> Everyone has a story, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. at home, there's I have like a, a giant Comic Con bag of things I've picked up the years. I can't throw them away, not because it's hoarding. Well, maybe it's <laughs> yeah, hoarding. I mean, let's be honest, a little bit, it's a little hoarding. Bit. But they're mementos. <laughs> I pick this one and I go, okay, this pin was when I walked by that one year and TBS gave me this Conan O'Brien pin or mm -hmm. when this, this movie came out and I pick up this, this thing. And some, sometimes like movies get promoted here that never do well or like you just, like, <laughs> fall into oblivion. But like that was my mentor. John, John Carter, was, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, they probably were pretty big at Comic-Con, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like the bands. I've got a ton of the bands just from preview night. They oh. do the little rubber bands and they say like, Stranger Things and everything out there. Nice. Like, oh, is this where people have been getting the Meeseeks boxes yeah, from? Yeah, I've been the, seeing people holding the Meeseeks boxes and kind of wondering where those came from. In terms of trends, this is definitely a, a newer trend, I think, at conventions. It didn't really pop up till like maybe three years ago. Mystery boxes. Mystery boxes. Mystery so what, boxes. What's, how you, do those work? Now that I mention it to you, I, I swear you will see them everywhere. Oh, yeah, that's they one are of those things. grab boxes. You pay a flat rate. Maybe it's. $40, $50, and they say there's like $150 worth of stuff in here of random swag. And you That's don't nice. get to choose no, what no. you get. No, no, it's a mystery. Right? You can get a theme one, but I swear if you walk down the line, you'll see there's a, a Five Night at Freddy's mystery box. There's a random you know, superhero mystery box. There's you get a, different sizes too, like yeah, depending they, on your budget. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hmm. It's like the on-location version of the subscription box, right? Oh, like your loot crate. but. In person, do do you tend to actually get good stuff in that, or is that just how people get rid of their extra stock of pants? I, I think it's a little bit of column A, <laughs> a little oh, bit of column maybe. B. Why not both? <laughs> yeah, maybe if you need like a good box, kids love them. Oh, so if you need like, okay. and nothing, there's nothing that entices kids more than mystery, <laughs> right? The unknown, the the blind package. So if you if you get it for a kid, if you need a kid, have a friend, a nephew, a niece who needs a piece of swag from Comic-Con, get them a <laughs> 15, box. $20 mystery box nice. and they'll get the things inside and the surprise of opening them. Or, or you can tell them never to open them and it'll be the, <laughs> always be the best thing inside. It's the, a time capsule now, bury it. Yes. Yeah. Well, not, in, in, not in the cardboard, first. yeah. <laughs> yeah, see right here, oh my oh, God. Yeah, yeah. 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 More, you yeah. were right. More You're mystery right. boxes. You mentioned it. Right here. Like this, you know, Super Mario just jump up and then becomes like a point and a coin. Okay, so I thought brick. those were just, they were just boxes that people were just getting because they looked like things. I didn't realize there was stuff inside. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta always open the box, huh? <laughs> Can I have all the boxes? What, there's something in here? Yeah, you're happy with just the awesome. empty box. $35, yeah. please, for the empty box. <laughs> nice. Sweet. That sounds about right. And so are these like just examples of what might be in the box? Exactly. Is what they show you? That's pretty yeah. cool. Oh, okay, okay. Totally. That's a, th there's, 
this happened a lot in like in like Japanese stores, right? Mm -hmm. And this is sort of this has kind of come over to co to comic conventions. Now. Yeah. Okay. And finally, we are going to make a right here because I think we finally reached the end. <laughs> yeah. to, the well, this is a video game section. Yeah. They on one end, Artist Alley. The other end. Video games. But like they have some of the old school like arcade games too here. Totally. Like, those are uh, there's cool. pinball yes. that's sometimes here. Uh, there's um, yeah, Capcom, Nintendo. Yeah, it's. Oh yeah, they got Odyssey, Mario yeah. Odyssey, giant Blizzard booth in the back for Hearthstone and uh, and Overwatch and. You think they got Smash Bros here? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Smash Bros. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. You know, I don't know if you guys play uh, like these fighting games. Right before Comic Con, there's a big tournament, Evo. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so I know someone who like went to D23, which is the Disney convention, yes. last weekend. After it, went to Evo <laughs> in Las Vegas for a video game tournament. And then this week is in Comic Con. Jeez. Wow, that's, that's their that vacation. Is that like their yeah. their vacation each year? Is that yes. that blocking? That, I like Absolutely. It. I, it's a lifestyle I, I aspire to. Ooh. Check out this Iron, Iron Man here. Free yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good Iron Man. Very cool. Amazing. Cool. So glowy. Iron Man might be a good place to end this. <laughs> I'm, I'm exhausted. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> oh, I. Oh, sweaty. I've aged. <laughs> <laughs> I've visibly aged. <laughs> we've, uh, we've, we've definitely bonded over. A long Sweat, walk through Comic Con. Tears. You don't know any. You don't really know someone until you've walked through Comic Con with them. So uh, thank you guys both so much for walking thank through Comic Con. Yeah, thank with me. you. Uh, this is fun. Got to have you guys in San Francisco for stop by the office, do some sure. builds in the future. Absolutely. And thank you out there for watching and walking through Comic Con with us. Sorry you couldn't be here, but hope you got a, a tiny glimpse of what it means to be at SDCC. We'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>